everyone, this is Heather. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I've got several different techniques to teach you with the watercolor brush pens from Chocola. Last year they sent me some of their chalk markers and I shared with you how to use them in your stamping and paper crafting. And today I'm going to be reviewing their watercolor brush pens. And I really wanna thank them for sending these to me to go over with you today. This is the packaging for their watercolor brush pens. Inside are two trays of markers. There are 28 colors and you also get two watercolor pens. So these have an empty barrel that you fill with water that you could use to blend out the colors with. I really love the convenient trays. It's the perfect way to store them. You can just keep them on the tray and keep them in the box. Each marker has a barrel that's colored to the color that's inside the marker. They have clear caps and inside is a really soft synthetic brush and each marker is filled with liquid watercolor. I did want to point out there's no color names or numbers on the barrel so just keep that in mind but the color that's on the barrel is really close to the color of marker inside. I also wanted to point out that the caps do fit on the end of the barrel so you're not going to lose them while you're working with them. As I mentioned earlier, you get two water brushes. You just unscrew the top and fill it with water and screw it back in. And it's much more convenient than using a cup of water and a paint brush. Or if you're like me and you're really clumsy and you tend to dip your water over, this is really perfect. It helps with having less mess. I really like that there are two different tips on the water brushes. There is a more pointy tapered tip that's pretty much exactly like the tips on the markers themselves. And there's also a flat bristle brush and that's really good for backgrounds. And I also wanted to point out that it does come with a watercolor paper pad and there are 15 sheets in the pad. So you really have everything that you need to get started. Because these are water based, you definitely want to use a permanent ink pad when you're stamping and watercoloring. My go-to is Stays On Black. Stays On comes in lots of different colors too though. Do you just want to make sure that you are using a permanent ink? There are also two different types of papers that will work with this, obviously watercolor paper, but you can also use a smooth cardstock like Bristol Smooth. My personal go-to is Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. I really love it. I find it's very easy to stamp on and blend on. So today, instead of doing an entire card, I'm just going to show you the different techniques that I used for each of these cards. I used the watercolors for three different styles of background, as well as coloring in my stamped and die cut images. For this first card, I used products from Lawn Fawn. The stamps are from them, as well as the background die. For this card, I used Bristol Smooth cardstock. I've cut down the piece for my background and I like to work on either a scrap of paper or you could work on a glass mat or a non-porous craft mat. For the background, I'm using the two darkest browns that are available in the set. And I'm going to do a swiping motion across my Bristol Smooth cardstock kind of using the edge of the brush. And you can just be really messy with this. We want it to have a wood grain texture. So I've laid down the first brown and then I'm gonna go in with the second brown and I'm not putting too much pressure down, just swiping it across the paper. Once I've laid down the marker, I've gone to the flat watercolor brush. I always keep paper towels nearby and I like to squeeze the barrel of the pen until I get the tip wet. And I found with these markers, you don't want a really saturated tip. You just need it to be damp. And all I'm gonna do is just run that across the paper side to side in the same direction that I did those markers. If you feel like you need a little bit more water, you can just squeeze the brush a little bit as you're working your way down. Especially on Bristol, you don't wanna to put too much water on the paper. And that gives a really realistic wood grain look. If you feel like you need a little bit more color in some spaces, even while it's wet, you can definitely go in and add some more marker and blend that out 
with your brush. You can just keep continuing to add color, but like I said, the Bristol Smooth cardstock is not gonna be quite as forgiving as a watercolor paper. In between colors, you wanna squeeze your brush off onto that paper towel, just to make sure that you're not leaving any color on the bristles. You can let this naturally dry, or if you're impatient like me, you can use your embossing gun. I usually set it to low and you can speed up the drying process by heat drying it. Now that I've dried my panel, I'm going to place it over top of the Lawn Fawn wood grain background and run that through my die cutting machine. And now you can see I've got that cool wood grain texture for a really realistic wood panel. Next, I wanna show you how I colored some of the images on this card. We're gonna do the cute little hedgehog and the leaves. So for the leaves, I wanted a really saturated look. So I'm going to color in every single section of the leaves. I'm gonna start off with the orange and fill in different sections, just really loose, doesn't need to be perfect. Then I'm moving on to this sort of army green to just fill in a few different sections on each leaf. And then every other section that isn't colored in is going to be filled in with this vibrant red. Don't worry about overlapping colors because we're going to be blending them all in together in just a second. Now that I've got that color laid down, I'm going to the pointed bristle brush. I've squeezed out a little bit of water and tapped off the excess onto the paper towel. And now I'm just going to lightly blend all those colors in together. You don't want to get it too muddy. And if you find that you're picking up a little too much color in your brush, just go to your paper towel and wipe off that excess. And if you need to squeeze out more water, do it on your paper towel. And you're just going to blend all those colors in together. You just want like a really loose mottled look, and that gives you a bright saturation of color. I'm gonna clean off my water brush, and I'm going back to the darkest brown that we used on the background. I'm gonna use a flicking motion and go all the way around the outside body of the hedgehog, and take my water brush and just follow along those lines. Next, I'm grabbing this really pale peach color and I'm just going to add the color where I would like it to be the darkest on the little body of my hedgehog and then I'm going to take my water brush and just pull that color in towards the center. So this is more of a traditional look where you have some lighter and darker sections with the same color and you're just softening that color by pulling it out with the water. So here are two different ways that you can use these on Bristol Smooth. You can get a really deep saturated color or you can get a softer color by applying it in just some sections and blending that out with your water. Next, I'm moving on to this cute elephant card. I've watercolored him with the markers. I've watercolored paper and then die cut it. And then I've also used the watercolors for some fun splatter on the background. And this card is using the Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. So just like I did on the hedgehog, I'm going to add the color where I would like it to be darkest on the elephant. Then I'm going to take my water brush and pull that color out towards the center. And I found that I definitely get a smoother blend on the watercolor paper. So I think I like watercolor paper just a little bit better for these pens. It's also a lot easier to build up and blend your color without your paper warping too much. So you can easily go in and just continue to add color, build it up and blend it out as much as you would like. So for the body of the elephant, I used the gray and then I'm using one of these bright pinks for the inside of his ears and on his little toenails and fingernails. And again, I'm just gonna take that water brush and blend that color out. Next, I'm going to show you how I applied the color for the die cut leaves. I've got a smaller piece of watercolor paper and it's going to be very similar to what I did on the background of the first card. 
then I'm taking this really bright green and covering it over the entire little piece of cardstock. Then I'm applying a slightly darker green and a few little swaths of this army green. I'm gonna go back to my watercolor brush and blend this all together, but I don't want too many streaks. So I'm gonna kind of apply a little bit more water and really blend that out and get a nice mottled watercolor look. And once this piece dries, I'm going to place my leaf dies over top and die cut those out. And here you can see I've got that really pretty mottled green look for my die cut leaves. And the last technique that I used on this card is a splatter technique. Also, I think I forgot to mention that the stamps are from My Favorite Things and these dies are from Stampin' Up. For the splatter technique, you just want some type of non-pour surface, a glass mat, one of your acrylic blocks. I've just got a lid from some Tupperware and I'm just going to color on my surface. I've got my spray bottle filled with water and I'm just gonna give that a little bit of spritz. Then I'm going to use a large paintbrush and pick up that color. And then I'm going to tap my brush onto my watercolor paper. When I'm ready to switch to the next color, I'm gonna clean off my brush and just do the same thing. You can just go through and use as many colors as you would like on your panel. And moving on to the last card, I'm gonna show you how I did this galaxy background and how I colored the dies after I had die cut them. And again, this card is on some watercolor paper. I'm gonna bring my scratch piece of paper over. I've already die cut my tree and grass from the watercolor paper and I'm going to smear the color directly on where I would like it. Take my watercolor brush and smooth that out. I feel like this technique as opposed to first coloring and then die cutting definitely gives you a more saturated color. So I've just applied that kind of army green and then I'm gonna go back to one of these darkest browns. You definitely wanna work on a scratch piece of paper or a porous surface just so that you're not getting ink all over everything. And just go back and forth applying that color and with your clean brush, just go over and spread all that color around. And I think for this Halloween scene, this deep saturated color is really cool and spooky. And lastly, I'm going to show you how I did my galaxy background. So it's very similar to how we've done some of the other backgrounds, but I'm working in sections with the color, just kind of blobs of color in different sections instead of going all over the entire panel. So I'm gonna add some gray then in between some of these sections, I'm gonna go in with this bright purple, and it's okay if they overlap. And then this really deep dark blue, I'm gonna go in and kind of fill in where there isn't any more color. And we're just gonna go in with the water brush and really blend that in. So this technique, I added quite a bit of water to really get those sections to blend in together. If you feel like it's starting to get muddy, go back to your paper towel and kind of clean off your bristles so you don't get one solid color. You want all three of those colors to really show through. Once my panel is dry, I wanted to add some cool splatters with some sparkle paint. So I'm using the Frost White All Purpose Ink I put a little bit of my lid with some water and same thing that we did with the other. You're just going to pick it up on a brush and get those nice cool splatters. The more paint you have, the bigger droplets you're going to get. And once this dries, you're going to have a really cool shimmery galaxy pattern. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at all the different techniques that you can do with the Chocola water brush pens. They've been nice enough to give me a discount code. It is Heather10, and that will give you 10% off your purchase. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
Be sure to check out my channel and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!